Hi, welcome back to Oxford Medical Summaries. This is Dr. Aziz again. I'm a physician based in the UK. I work in emergency medicine, family medicine, and also in research. So if you haven't seen the last video, go and watch that for a good overall summary about MMR vaccine and autism. As a quick recap, Wakefield produced a descriptive study which was published in The Lancet in 1998 where parents had allegedly felt that autism had developed after the MMR vaccine. Wakefield himself said, we did not prove an association between measles, mumps and rubella vaccine and the syndrome, i.e. autism, described. A statement that if Andrew Wakefield had not made, then this paper would never have gotten published in The Lancet, something that is until today debated as to how it even got published in The Lancet, the most prestigious and oldest medical journal in the world. He did utilise media, he worked in congruence with influential people as described in detail and ultimately caused a huge concern for parents worldwide an effect that ripples on sadly until today although with education and countless robust scientific studies unlike what wakefield carried out the myth of mmr vaccines causing an increase in autism has been quashed so andrew wakefield was the protagonist and a few years later he was struck off the medical register in the uk and he will never be allowed to practice medicine here in england but then key questions still surround this. Why would a young doctor who had his whole future ahead of him jeopardize everything? Why didn't he just accept he was wrong? Many doctors and scientists get things wrong. It's not a big deal and it's certainly a misconception that just because you get something wrong that you will then be struck off or if you go against this status quo. And in, in Andrew Wakefield's case, it's certainly a misconception that he got struck off simply for presenting his paper in 1998. In fact, if we take a very specific look at what the GMC, which is the General Medical Council, the body that overlooks and monitors doctors here in the UK, they actually charged him with professional misconduct. And the charges that were leveled against him was of the following. He was being paid to conduct the study by solicitors representing parents who believed their children had been harmed by MMR. Crucially, these payments were undeclared and obviously it brought a significant bias into the study. The second charge that was brought against him was that Wakefield ordered investigations without the requisite paediatric qualifications including colonoscopies, colon biopsies and lumbar punctures on his research subjects without the approval of his department's ethic board contrary to the children's clinical interest when these diagnostic tests were not indicated by the children's symptoms or medical history. This is huge. He carried out colonoscopies. This is an invasive procedure, a camera test that basically from the back passage up the colon, taking biopsies, lumbar punctures, which is essentially a spinal tap into the spinal column, taking fluid without the, without the approval of the department's ethics board. And the children's symptoms and history did not indicate, i.e. there was no warranted reason for carrying out these significantly invasive procedures. Next on the list of charges brought against Andrew Wakefield, he acted dishonestly and irresponsibly in failing to disclose how patients were recruited for the study, as well as in his descriptions in the Lancet papers and in question after the paper published about what ailments the children had and when those ailments were observed relative to their getting vaccinated the data was adjusted. I mean, there was no significant data in the study anyway. It was a descriptive paper of eight patients and the stories that the parents narrated. And these parents were pushed by a legal company, which we'll go on to shortly. Again, number four on the list. He conducted the study on a basis not approved by the hospital's ethics committee. Number five, he purchased blood samples for five pounds each from children present at his son's birthday party. Wakefield himself joked about this in a later presentation, but this is no joking matter. You do not do this kind of thing. You do not take blood from a patient, let alone children, without parental consent at a birthday party. I mean, I don't know how medicine is practiced in other countries, but this is so wrong by UK standards. So this is not about Wakefield going against the big pharma or the vaccine companies or the status quo. This was serious misconduct charges as listed here. And he was found guilty of all of these charges. Wakefield denied these charges, but on 28 January 2000, 2010, the GMC ruled that Wakefield was guilty of all these charges and stated that he had failed in his duties as a responsible consultant and that acted against the interests of his patients and dishonestly and irresponsibly in his controversial research. On 24th May 2010, he was struck off the United Kingdom Medical Register. And rightly so. 
So what did drive Andrew Wakefield and what still drives him today? Because a lot of parents still look up to him as his father figure, as his godfather of bringing justice against for their children and bringing meaning to why their children have now developed autism. If he was willing to give up on his medical career, if he was willing to not put his hands up and say, look, I got it wrong, let's move on, let me do some different research, let me look at different data, let alone carrying out these a lot of these unethical procedures. We find when we delve deeper, money is a significant factor here. Money is a powerful drive and it's pretty evident that this is what drove Andrew Wakefield. Brian Deer has written, written an excellent book and I'll reference it down below. Again, this is not sponsored or affiliate marketing. I don't even know how that works. Brian Deer, a British investigative journalist, has done some impeccable research, the vast majority of which Wakefield himself never denied. But in summary, Andrew Wakefield received significant amount of money and I will go on to how much was revealed that he received. Andrew Wakefield started two companies in the hope that he could capitalize lies on some of this hysteria that he caused. Immunospecifics Limited was the name of one of them and Carmel Healthcare, named after his wife, was another one. And these were designed to sell diagnostic kits to parents who thought their children may have autism. His lawyer, Richard Barr, their legal team gave Andrew Wakefield $800,000 to essentially push the MMR vaccine and autism research. Now, that is a huge amount of money, even in today's age. This was back in the 90s. I don't know how much doctors get paid in America. I heard some of them maybe millionaires. Let me tell you, in the NHS, the National Health Service in the UK, where probably 99% of British doctors until today still work in, the consultant, the senior most doctor, will get something around 80, 85,000 pounds. Back in 1998, a consultant, he would have received a salary of 59,000 pounds, which is approximately $100,000. So essentially, Wakefield was receiving almost 10 times this in payment from an injury claims company run by Richard Barr, this lawyer, on top of his salary. Now, this is an interesting excerpt from Dr. Offit's book, and again, I'll link that down below as a reference, excellent read. And he says, when Wakefield was confronted two years earlier after claims he had received $100,000, he argued that the sum was closer to $50,000. Now, with a document from the Legal Services Commission, and I'll explain what that is, in front of him, Wakefield didn't deny the amount was far greater. He instead tried to justify it, this undeclared money from a personal injury claims company. The work involved nights, weekends, and much of my holidays. Hmm. Now this is true for any researcher, any doctor in fact. Why did he not declare the money then? If he felt this was justified by UK ethics and laws here, you have to declare that money. And if you delve further into it, the vast majority of his team that was part of the 1998 study in The Lancet, they were not even aware that he was receiving this money. How does it justify any of his other behaviours, such as carrying out unauthorised colonoscopies or paying young children at a birthday party to take blood from them? Andrew Wakefield, now shunned, struck off and discredited here in the United Kingdom then moved over to America, where seemingly he continues to enjoy fame and presumably fortune as a celebrity speaker, directing movies, and still pushing the dangerous anti-vax agenda. We then come next to Richard Barr, British lawyer running, amongst other things, a personal injury claims team. Now, investigative lawyers or legal firms in the USA and presumably in other parts of the world have to pay for any investigative work they do. In the UK, the system is somewhat different. We have more of a centralised system here. And Richard Barr was able to somehow persuade the Legal Services Commission to finance scientific investigation, money that was then undeclared. The case against MMR, which the Legal Services Commission funded, was the first in England's history and likely the last that was funded by the commission. The commission, when this whole thing died down, they concluded in retrospect it was not effective or appropriate for us to fund research. The courts are not the place to prove medical truths. And then we come on to the very unholy trinity being completed by a gentleman called Dan Burton, a Republican congressman known for a number of ludicrous claims and the courting of media attention, who as far back as 1977 was advocating for the use of Letrile to treat cancer, a substance which was later found to be comparable to cyanide poisoning and debunked by multiple scientific studies as having any therapeutic effect for cancer. But again, just like Wakefield and parents with children of autism, to many cancer victims back in the 1970s, Dan Burton was a hero. You see, having an illness is by and in itself a protracted period of uncertainty certainty. As humans, our brains are trained, are designed to look for connections or correlations and often in a state of vulnerability, which we often are when we are ill, we look for something tangible to hold on to. That may have been late trial in the 1970s and now in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was MMR vaccine. 
In summary, we have a struck off doctor funded and seemingly fueled by undeclared money and fame, a personal injuries claims legal team and an eccentric Republican congressman with a history of wildly false and dangerous claims, all of whom pushed the concept the MMR vaccine causing autism. Ultimately, it is the two traits that has haunted men throughout time and culture, fame and money that drove these individuals at the expense, concern and worry of millions, if not billions of parents and families worldwide. I'll leave you with a sobering thought, a sobering quote rather, regarding Richard Barr, the lawyer whose personal claims team recruited subjects to Wakefield and also paid Andrew Wakefield to a tune of nearly a million dollars. Unlike the 1,300 families he represented, Richard Barr had been compensated for his efforts, his law firm having received more than $20 million from the Legal Service Commission. If you're wondering where this doubt, where this uncertainty about whether MMR vaccine causes autism comes from, this is where it comes from. Essentially, three individuals driven by fame, driven by money, and driven by greed and utilizing the media, which sensationalized all of this. Again, as mentioned, I'll link it down below, the first video about this, where studies now of on over 14 million children have demonstrated that MMR vaccine has no association with autism whatsoever. So do not give in to these individuals who chase money and fame at the cost of your children's health and safety. Until next time, please click like if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications. We will be bringing you more evidence-based medicine and science here and trying to understand the psychology of why people do what they do and finding a new way forward. Thank you very much. Stay safe and see you next time.